were here for the week seven press conference with defensive coordinator, inside linebackers coach Peter Sermon. Uh, prior to week seven's matchup at Utah, we'll go ahead and get questions started with Thomas Dunn from Right for California. Uh, good morning, Peter. Uh, Justin was just in here. We were talking about that getting uh, opponents off schedule. How do you wrestle with the adjustments of adjusting your fronts, uh, sending more people in on blitzes or in run support, and how do you feel like those adjustments will help you down the line? Yeah, I mean, a big part of, you know, playing good defense is getting a good third downs and getting a good third downs require, uh, you know, efficient first and second downs and, and trying to, uh, you know, put yourself in as many longer yardage situations as you can. Um, and there's a for us, you know, as we talk about as defense, there's a little bit of a, of a balancing act of what we want to do, uh, you know, what kind of coverage we want to put behind it. Uh, and, you know, what uh, what type of movement or what type of pressures we want to install. Um, so that, that's the kind of a week to week thing uh, on on who we're playing and you know what uh, what we feel uh, our strengths are at the time. But uh, yeah, I think mean, big picture, any time that you can get people off schedule and, and find some more negative yardage plays, uh, that's going to be big, and, and that's something that we need to uh, attempt to find some some uh, sacks and some and some negative yardage plays. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Jeff Ferrado from Cal Sports Report. That's sort of what I wanted to ask you about as well, Peter, but besides the pressure on the quarterback, uh, whether it leads to a sack or not, besides that, um, what else would you say have been the, the biggest issues for your defense so far? The things that uh, really kind of stood out, you know, it's it's been some of the um, some of the matchups down the field, you know, uh, thought we had some some opportunities, win some plays on on third downs uh, on Saturday and, you know, the 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 balls were completed. Unfortunately, there were some opportunities to get uh, some disruption on the quarterback, but uh, the ball came out, uh, or maybe we didn't uh, run the pattern exactly the way we kind of uh, tried to get it instructed. Uh, but those are the things um, that that I think are some of the, the biggest things that we have to continue to address: is the explosive pass plays. Uh, you know, we haven't done a fantastic job of of getting the quarterback on the ground, and, and you know, sometimes sacks aren't reflective of uh, harassing a quarterback or getting good pressures. Um, you know, so, so it's not all about sack numbers, but uh, we have to do a better job of, you know, it doesn't matter if we're in four-man rush or five-man, of, of winning some more matchups uh, up front and, and being able to be uh, disruptive with the quarterback. And then, you know, guys in the back end, when the ball's in the air, we have opportunity to, to you know, secure a tackle. Uh, you know, we have to do those things. So uh, I think for the last... Um, 12 months we've been talking about pass defense as a as a we proposition and, and it's, it's really no different. All right, we'll go to Jake Curtis. Yeah, uh, Justin said that Jackson is day to day. What effect does that have on a defense if he doesn't play and who would play in his stead if he doesn't play? Well, anytime that you have, uh, you know, a uh, a guy that that isn't isn't practicing and getting ready for a game, there's always uh, you know a little bit of a disruption just because there's so much invested in his uh, you know those guys that that play a lot that make all the calls. There's a lot invested into the mental side of of how you get lined up, of how you communicate, um, of the checks that we have up for the week. Um, you know, so that will always be you know something if if a guy does miss some time, those are those are challenging things. Uh, but I you know the the room uh, you know we got Blake Anzalatis, uh, Hunter Barth. Uh, Muelo Iosefa, K. Uluave, uh, KJ. You know, there there are some uh, very able body guys in there. And then that if uh, Jack's not ready to go, those guys will be ready to go. And, and uh, we'll put them the best position we can. And uh, they need to go out, uh, go out there and, and make the plays that, that present themselves. All right, we'll go back to Jeff Ferrado. Yeah, obviously Utah has not had Cam Rising yet. And it's kind of a mystery as to when or if he will play. Um, how do you prepare for that? You guys, have, you have tape on him, obviously, but you haven't played them for years. Uh, and what do you think of the other two quarterbacks? And I think Bryson's also banged up. Yeah, you know, it, it's. Uh, I think the style of play, um, you know, could change a little bit. I mean, Cam Rising is a fantastic player. He's uh, been, uh, you know, an exceptional player for a long time in the conference. And uh, you know, it's hard, like you said, if. If uh, without film on them and without any uh, certainty, you know we, we're looking at we're looking at their personnel. We're looking at formations. You know we're looking at you know the things that uh, they have consistently shown. Which you know like all offenses and all defenses, you know there's uh, there's some things that you've invested time into and, and some things that uh, 
your kids can do versus any spacings, any any looks that that have a lot of answers. So, uh, you know, we look at the totality of the offense of, of what they've done. Coach Ludwig has done a fantastic job there on offense, um, and so there's a there's a long history of of his background in the conference. And you know, we did play him, I believe, in '19 uh, out there. So uh, I mean, there's some familiarity with it, and and, and we'll we'll get a, a good plan in place and. And, uh, you know, we'll have an idea of, of who we're going to play probably pregame, and, and then we'll adjust from there. Yeah, because obviously Rising has seen a lot. You know, he's seen everything. Uh, I would imagine that you have maybe better opportunity to try to take advantage of a younger guy than, than him by doing some scheme things. Yeah, I mean, most likely, you know, most likely, uh, you know, uh, guys that don't have the, the same wealth of experience as, as another player, uh, you know those guys do have some uh, some things that they continue to work on as they get uh, experience. But uh, you know the guys that have been playing, you know, in his in his absence are, are gaining valuable experience. So uh, you know they're talented guys. They can throw the ball well. They move well. Uh, so you know we'll 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 face whoever uh, you know they put on the field, and and then again we'll make some adjustments uh, accordingly if if it's not who we think it is. And injuries notwithstanding, do you anticipate? Any lineup changes on your defense? Uh, it's been a competitive week, you know, so we'll uh, we'll continue to, uh, you know, possibly see some some more guys cycle through uh, in an effort to find uh, the the guys that that can make the plays uh, at crucial times, and you know, give guys some opportunities if uh, you know the guys that that are in those spots, uh, we feel there's there's uh, you know more production on the field than we're getting. Uh, we'll explore every option and put the best product on the field. Obviously, the league is very, very good, and there's some great offenses. But how difficult has this been to swallow, giving up 50 points twice in three weeks? It, it, could you even have imagined that? No, it's uh, it's disappointing, Jeff. It's uh, you know from where we've been uh, in in the in the defense of the style of defense we've played for uh, you know uh, in the past. Uh, those are extremely frustrating. Uh, it's frustrating. It's uh, uh, it makes you angry. You know, it it, it tests your, uh, you know, the the approach of uh, you know getting the guys ready to play. Uh, how I call a game. You know, how I practice. You know, what we do in our scout periods. What we do in our walkthroughs. What we do in our film sessions. Uh, so it, it it provides an opportunity to to really evaluate uh, the entire uh, process. And what we're doing right now uh, has a lot uh, has a lot left to, to be desired. Uh, we're not putting a, a product on the field um, that I think is is where we believe we can be. Um, we're scoring some points, and, and for us not to be able to to stop people is is disappointing to to say the least. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Steve Croner from the SF Chronicle. Yeah, Peter, I think you answered a lot of this question in your previous answer, but I'll see if I can follow up. Look, you, you personally and your team has had a lot of success on defense over the past four or five years. Obviously, have not had a lot of success the past two or three weeks. How much does that cause you to self-reflect, so to speak? Are we doing things the right way? And how much of it is, you know what, we've got to stay the course. We're still doing things the right way. We just have to do them better. You know, Steve, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, I think, I think as a football coach, you're in the self-reflection business, uh, and if you don't have the opportunity or you don't have the the wherewithal uh, to reflect, uh, I, I think that's uh, probably a fatal flaw. Um, however, uh, every time there's a bump in the road or you're not playing as well uh, as you believe, that doesn't make it necessary to uh, to deviate from the course uh, when you do have uh, you know a body of work. Of you know of of being able to perform and, and you know give your team an opportunity to win. So I, I think it's a little bit of both, and I think it's a that's a well pointed question of of how how do you navigate as a coach when things aren't going the way you want them to go, um, and as things don't go the way you want them to go, like every opportunity in life, uh, people will provide you their answers. Uh, when things are going good, uh, there's not a lot of people that that uh, offer suggestions. So. Uh, you know, right now, giving up some points in the last three weeks, uh, I'm, a, I'm a suggestion coach right now. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of suggestions are, are coming across the desk, and, and I think all of them are, are merited, and I think you have to uh, understand where they're coming from, who they're coming from, uh, and, you know, sometimes they're, they're great suggestions, and those are, those are things that 
uh, you have to, uh, you know, adapt and you have to be able to uh, kind of take the emotions and the, and the pride of the product out and step back and say, okay, with, with this group of players that we have, um, with the style of offenses we're playing, uh, you have to really step back and, you know, almost a, a clinical approach to it where uh, emotions is so much of what we do on football. Emotion is so much what you do on the defensive side of the ball. It's toughness, it's effort, it's all these other um, intangibles, feelings, uh, efforts, those types of things that uh, you have to you have to have that balancing act and to to deviate from a, a foundation in the middle of a year uh, is probably something that um, you know I wouldn't recommend to any coach uh, because we have you know in this style of in style of system this system. Uh, you know, Justin's been here for, you know, seven years of, of foundation, and I've been here for six years of foundation. We have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours invested in these players and this technique and these schemes that uh, I think we have to continue to, to press forward. We have to believe in what we're doing, and we need the young men to believe that the techniques, uh, they are capable of performing. Thank you. All right, looks like that'll wrap us up. We'll be back in a few minutes with offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach Jake Spavitol.